So from a purely strategic standpoint, if Trump stuck to the policy and said, this is what I'll do during a second term, this is what I did for you during a first term, and got rid of the name calling, don't you think that would be a more effective and a bigger win? I do not. And here's really why. why? Because it's not it's not Trump. You get, I get that. No, no, no. no, no. no <laughs> I'll, really, give, okay. you, I'll give you that. I cannot believe I'm having this conversation with Sean Spicer. No, no, no. The reason, the reason I want this though, Stephen, it, it's, it's not that you need to explain it to me. Yeah. I want people, I want you as a strategist to explain it to, to the viewer. First off, it's not a good strategy because it's not the man himself. You, you He is what he is. He's a fighter. He's a counterpuncher. He's going to always be on the attack. And he's going to be on the attack personally if you try to come after him. And I just, you can't. It, that's so it, it inextricably linked into his personality. Uh, you're not. I don't think you're going to get it out out of there. Now, here's what I think. I don't think actually selling the policy today because I think people are either for Trump or against Trump. I yeah. think it's turnout, and I also think that I think what's helping us most is the lived experience. And I keep saying this on the show that if people under 35 want to continue to live like Russian serfs, not own anything. Not, not have a chance to own anything, then they should keep voting for Biden and progressive Democrats and their policies. And now you're seeing their lived experience is so horrible. They can barely make the credit card payments. They're leaving paycheck to paycheck. They can't afford a home. Family formations pushed out into the late 30s, early 40s, that now you're seeing 50% of those people are willing to vote for President Trump because of the lived experience, just like African-American men and just like Hispanic men. Their lived experience is so bad under Biden that they're prepared to actually listen to Trump or want Trump back because they remember the golden years of 18 and particularly 19. And I think that's our strategy. Continue to push. Look, this is not a theoretical exercise. With Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley, it's I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this versus Biden. With Trump, it's very simple. I, I did, did this. This right. is the empirical evidence of my presidency in the way I roll. And this is, you know, against the mullahs and the CCP and Putin and all that. And this is the way uh, this is the way that these guys roll. And if you see Biden and particularly now where he's hugging on Zelensky, who's a total con artist at the same time, he's kicking the Israeli government, uh, you know, uh, under the bus. You're just it's just going to it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And so I just don't think you can take Trump's personality and the personality of the fighter uh, out of uh, it, it, in which it's just not going to happen. You and I talked about this a lot. Just to have a pure policy uh, discussion, just not him. You, you got to take the whole package. By the way, you know, 45% of the nation is just not going to vote for that package under anything. Right. They, just, they just, but that's fine. These look 52, 48, we'd win 40 states. We take the house and the Senate. <laughs> 